Let's talk about the most common mistakes that people make about their Clifton Strengths, also known as their Gallup Strengths Finder results. See, I encounter a lot of people who have misconceptions or they make assumptions about Clifton Strengths, but I'm here to set the record straight and I want you to get the most out of your results. See, most people take Clifton Strengths in hopes to improve at work or at school, but I'd say the majority of them never fully grasp the power and insight that this tool has to offer. Now, I admit that understanding the depth in this tool is not trivial. It's gonna require time, effort, and commitment. But I can also tell you that if you let it, the impact's going to reach every part of your life, including your professional and personal parts of your life. The power and reach of this tool are incredibly understated. This video will help clarify the most common mistakes that people make about Clifton Strengths so you can avoid them and make the most out of your results. Here we go. Mistake number one, people believe that their Clifton Strengths results are their strength. I get it. With names like Clifton Strengths and Strengths Finder, it's easy to believe that your results are your strengths. But the truth is that your results actually identify your talent themes. Now you might be wondering what? Remember, Clifton Strengths is based on decades of research. For Gallup to be able to collect, compile, and analyze all of that data, they are very specific about their language and their vocabulary, but don't let that deter you. Gallup defines a talent as a naturally recurring pattern of thinking, feeling, and behaving that can be productively applied. A talent theme is simply a category of talent or a grouping of talents. Gallup defines strength as the ability to consistently produce a positive outcome through near perfect performance in a specific task. What Gallup says is that to finish with a strength, you start with talent. So when you get your Clifton Strengths results, those are your leading talents, your leading talent themes. Those are your natural patterns of thinking, feeling, and behaving that can be productively applied. So when you get your results, think about it. How are those patterns showing up in your life? How are you using those patterns to get consistent positive results? What strengths can you identify from those talent themes. So let's say that you have the Relator talent theme as one of your top five. It could be that you're a valued team player because you take the time to develop a relationship with each person on the team. By doing that, you create trust and you're valued and you help your team move forward. Or if you're a salesperson, maybe your strength is that you're really good at repeat sales or creating long-term customer relationships. Again, maybe you're using your Relator talent theme to get to know your customers and create these relationships. Confusing your results with your strengths is such a common mistake that my very first video on Clifton Strengths was on this very topic. I invite you to check out this video here on strengths versus talent themes, and I'll be sure to include a link to it below in the description. Mistake number two, People assume that their Clifton Strengths results are what they do well. As we've discussed, your Clifton Strengths are your talent themes, not your strengths. They're your naturally recurring patterns of thinking, feeling, and behaving that could be productively applied. In layman's term, what they means is they're the patterns that come naturally to you. They come easily to you, and it's where you have the greatest potential. But potential isn't enough you have to develop your talents into strengths. So how do you do this? Gallup has a formula where they say that talent times investment equals strength. They define investment as the time you spend building your knowledge base, developing your talents, and practicing your skills. It's not enough for the assessment to identify your predominant talents or those patterns. You have to spend the time and effort training learning, practicing, and gaining experience to turn those talents into strengths. There's a lot more to explore on the relationship between talents and strengths, and even on how they relate to your weaknesses. For more info, here's a video on identifying your personal strengths and weaknesses. I'll include the link to that in the description as well. Mistake number three, people assume what each term means rather than understand Gallup's definition. 
Again, Clifton Strengths is based on decades of research. So for Gallup to have been able to collect, compile, and analyze all that data and being consistent amongst everybody who was part of that research for decades, it was critical for Gallup to be very precise about their language and their vocabulary. And that includes the definition of each of the 34 talent themes. So it's tempting to see terms like analytical, communication, context, or empathy and think to yourself, oh, I know what that means. I don't have to take the time to read Gallup's definition. But that would be a huge mistake. Applying your perception of what a term means would be inconsistent. Everybody has a nuanced difference on what they think these words mean. It would be the equivalent of comparing apples to pineapples. They're both fruits, they both have apple in the word, but they're completely different things. You might look at a talent theme like communication and assume that having the communication talent theme means that someone is a good communicator. But it's possible to be an effective communicator without having communication in your top five or even your top 10. What Gallup means by somebody who has the communication talent theme is somebody who's articulate, somebody who's verbally expressive, they think out loud, and they're a natural storyteller. You probably know somebody like that socially. You may think of them as outgoing, entertaining, or even engaging but you may not see them the way that Gallup sees them as having the communication talent theme. So to overcome this mistake, you have to adopt Gallup's definitions. Once you do, once you understand what they mean by their terms, you're gonna gain insights about yourself and others that you'd never consider before. With their language, you're gonna gain a different perspective on yourself. You're gonna make new discoveries and you're gonna have language to better describe yourself with more insights as you interact with others. Think about the advantage when you're talking about yourself in an interview, when you're looking to distinguish yourself from other candidates. Mistake number four, people think Clifton Strengths is just for work or school. Chances are that you heard about Clifton Strengths or Strengths Finder at work or at school. Either that or you heard about it talking to friends while you're doing some reading, watching some videos, doing some sort of personal development work. Combine that with the fact that Gallup touts that more than 90% of Fortune 500 companies have used Clifton Strengths to bring the power of strengths based development to their workplace culture. It's easy to believe that Clifton Strengths is solely a professional or an academic tool. But let's go back to basics. What's Clifton Strengths identifying within you? Your predominant patterns of thinking, feeling, and behaving. That doesn't start or stop at work or at school. Those patterns are with you all day long in your conversations, in your relationships, in your decision making, in your goal setting. Rather than just applying what you're learning about yourself at work and at school, go ahead and apply those lessons into every part of your life. Imagine every decision that you make, every word that you say, every action that you take. Your talent themes are unconsciously influencing you and your autopilot patterns every single day. But if you took the time to understand these patterns, what they really mean, now you have an opportunity to take a look at what's unconsciously influencing you. You can go ahead and make intentional shifts to change those autopilot patterns that are probably hurting you in some cases and improve your life. To dive deeper in how Clifton Strengths is impacting other aspects of your life, not just professional and academic, I invite you to check out this video here. I'll include the link to it in the description below. Mistake number five, people think just reading their Clifton Strengths results is enough. I get it. There are so many quizzes and personality tests out there, but let's face it, knowing isn't enough anymore. Nowadays, anybody can look up an answer. What differentiates you is if you can dig under the surface, really understand something, apply it, and if you can actually add value. 
take it further. Most assessments out there only identify you as one in four or one in 16 or one in 32 possible outcomes. But Clifton Strengths top five, just looking at your top five, identifies you as one in 33.4 million. Let that sink in. That's not something that you're gonna be able to understand on the spot. It's going to take real effort to actually understand your results and use them to improve your life. And passively reading your results isn't going to be enough to understand everything that Clifton Strengths has to offer. Believe me, I took the assessment three times over 15 years. And I admit it, the first two times, I took my results and I put them off to the side. I didn't really know what to do with them. It wasn't until the third time after I left my previous career that I took the time to go through some training. And it wasn't until then that I really understood all the layers and depth that were in my results. You really need to experience what you're learning about yourself. Soak it in. Don't just read your reports. Dig into the books, watch videos, talk to people, take a workshop, take a class, work with a coach. It's not until you live your results that you can really understand them and use them to transform your life. In fact, if you just want a taste of that, I invite you to register for my free masterclass where we talk about these small ways where your Clifton Strengths talents are impacting you every single day. You can register for free. I'll put the link to it in the description below. Mistake number six, people believe Clifton Strengths can determine what they can or can't do. Your Clifton Strengths results identify your natural patterns of thinking, feeling, and behaving. Just getting clear on that allows you to stop trying to be what you're not or who you're not and allows you to focus on developing the qualities about you where you're gonna get the most growth with the least amount of effort. That being said, your natural patterns don't define what you can or can't do. They only describe how you might approach it. Your results don't identify your interests, your desires, your experiences, or your beliefs. Based on your results alone, no one can predict whether you're going to be a musician or a baker. It's possible that someone can describe what qualities you'll bring to what you do. Maybe you're someone who is focused on developing people, or maybe you're somebody who has an emphasis on spreading an idea or a message. There are qualities that you'll bring to what you do, but the what is completely personal to you. Clifton Strengths or Strengths Finder isn't going to define what you can or can't do. What it can do is help you define the criteria of what's a right fit for you. And most people don't really think about that. Even if you have the same interests or experiences as somebody else, what may be a right fit for you may not be the same criteria that's a right fit for somebody else. One of you might enjoy more independent creative work whereas the other one might enjoy a lot of structure and being surrounded by a lot of people. One size doesn't fit all, but Clifton Strengths can get you a lot closer to determining what factors are gonna be the right fit for you. There's so much more that I could say about the mistakes, the misunderstandings and assumptions that people make about Clifton Strengths. But in this video, I just wanted to cover the biggest hurdles that I see that people make about the assessment itself. It took me a while to truly understand what this tool has to offer. And I wanted to save you from making the same mistakes that I did. I wanna thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the content or if you learned something, go ahead and do me a favor and hit the like button. And if you wanna learn more about Clifton Strengths or Strengths Finder and what you can do with your results, I not only invite you back to my channel to watch more videos, but I invite you to register for my free masterclass where we'll spend some time talking about how they impact you every single day. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.